What's up guys, TGS here. Today we're going over Deia, probably the most infamous character to ever release in Genshin, at least when it comes to 5 stars. At release she had many flaws and honestly it's not like Fontaine magically fixed all of those issues for her. But what Fontaine did is that it introduced a lot of characters that allow Deia to play in roles where the little she can do good is actually useful, actually comes in handy. For starters, when it comes to off-field usage, which is probably the most popular type of usage for Deia, we're talking about her being paired with characters like Line, Brizzly, and Yumilet. While as a baseline, her elemental skill is quite limited in actually being able to impact the game compared to what other characters can do, for these three characters in very specific situations, it can be decent. The thing it is specifically good for is providing unconditional interruption resistance for around 10 seconds without requiring particular type of attacks to be procced. Within the Pyro niche, if we compare it to something similar like Thomas Shield, for example, it is less restricted because Thomas Shield actually requires your active character to deal normal attacks to be stacked up and be durable. The other comparison would be Yan Fei's shield that uh, she gains at Constellation 4, but the issue with her is that it's tied to her elemental burst that is an 80 cost ability, so it's not that easy to manage energy-wise. For all of these reasons, she is actually actually a good option for Linnae, for example, if you want to have that interruption resistance effect on your team. Linnae is a character that can't use Toma at all, so Deia becomes very competitive. Actually, the true alternative to her ear would be Zhongli, that is a non-pyro unit, so it doesn't contribute to Linnae's passive, for example, which only makes Deia's case better. Now, Zhongli evens things out by reducing opponent's resistance to pyro through his elemental skill, but not having Having to play with that supremely annoying pillar of haze around you is just additional quality of life that makes me prefer Deia here. For all of its flaws, Deia's elemental skill does have something useful when it comes to offense. Specifically, it is able to hit opponents every 2 seconds and a half, give or take. This allows Deia to use the tenacity of the minerid set quite consistently and it is good for the team. In terms of damage ceiling, it is far off from the monopyroline teams with Kazuha, Shenling, Bennett and of course Linnae, but if you don't have enough skill to play Linnae without interruption resistance, then it works, I guess. <laughs> Jokes aside, it's a quite playable option, so it's good. Then comes her role in Nubilet and Brizzly teams, and other than providing interruption resistance here, she's also enabling elemental reactions. Let me remind you all that if you enjoy my content and my theory crafting, you can show your support by subscribing and leaving a thumbs up and also by following me on Twitter. Let's be honest here, when it comes to applying Pyro, her elemental skill as a baseline is just shit. But luckily, in Sumeru, Hoyverse introduced a way to make even subpar Pyro appliers actually good at enabling elemental reactions, and that is burning. The way it works, if you apply Dendron Pyro on opponents, it generates burning, and this burning effect will keep them damaging opponents over time and also apply pyro by itself. This can give you pretty consistent pyro application even if you use somebody like Deia that is not good at it at all. However, when it comes to characters like Nubilet, so hydro characters, the usage of burning to actually help them proc elemental reactions like vaporates can be pretty inconsistent because of how hydro interacts with burning. Long story short, hydro is quite detrimental for the uptime of burning for pretty understandable reasons as well. Uh, what happens if you throw water on fire. For that reason, when it comes to Nubilet, little Deia is not enough here. If you just play Deia with Nahida, Nubilet and another character, what you will get is just a virgin team. And a pretty shitty one as well, because Nubilet just doesn't apply that much Hydro. A good solution to this is adding Kazuha to this team, which is something I bet most people wouldn't complain about. Basically, by making Kazuha's word Hydro at the start of the rotation, and then making him absorb Pyro later in the rotation, you get both a stack for the new LED passive and more consistent pyro application to let him vaporize. The team feels pretty good, uh, especially in AoE, since you have Kazuha and then you have new LED triggering vaporize on multiple opponents. 
But uh, it is Nubilet, he is insane, so it's obvious that uh, most of his teams will feel great. The thing that feels bad about this team is that you only get Vaporite procs for 2 out of 3 charge attacks for Nubilet, because you only activate Kazo's burst and Deya's elemental skill for the second part of the rotation, since Deya's elemental skill just has 12 seconds of uptime. It is fine if you don't need that much damage early in the rotation, like uh, for example in the first chamber of, of the current abyss, where you only have to dispatch of uh, two minions, the abyss mage and the healer before you fight the second wave, so uh, that low of damage is fine, but if you need damage early in the rotation, it can feel bad. And offensively, it is surely not better than any of the Fiorina Nubilet teams, and not even better than the other Vaporites teams with Shenling and Nahida, for example. The only benefit you get here is the interruption resistance. Anyway, if you want to build Dea for this role, it is wise to give her the instructor set, since that will give Nubilet uh, extra elemental mastery which makes his vaporite is much stronger and if you have elemental mastery pieces it's good for Deya as well because she can proc some burgeon here. On the other hand when it comes to Brizzly she has it much easier because uh, Melt won't disrupt burning as much as vaporite does. The result is that uh, if you play in Brizzly Melt with uh, Deya, Bennett and Nahida you will have full pyro uptime on opponents even if you melt consistently with Brizzly, which is great. The flip side here is that since Brizzly is a normal attack user, Deya doesn't have the strongest argument over Toma. I guess she can use the tenacity of the Mirrorid set, but um, compared to having higher durability through a shield, it is not that great. But <laughs> why would you use Toma over Deya? I mean, just look at her, look at her, she's so cool, but um, looks don't exactly matter that much when said character is just one second of field time in total in the rotation, though. Sucks. However, if you want to see more of Deya on field, I might just have the solution for you. The solution is very expectedly Fiorina. Deya always had this problem where since her elemental burst attacks don't count as normal attacks, she can't use Shincho and Yelan. This forced her to use Mona if she wanted to be used on Vaporite's teams, and that wasn't great. And it goes without saying that Fiorina is a monumental increase over Mona for Deya on these teams. The idea is using a team with Fiorina, Kazua, Bennett and Deya, and Deya happens to be a carry that fits very well for this type of structure. Since after using her elemental burst she just requires 6 seconds of field time to do her thing, that leaves you with a lot of spare time in the rotation to use Bennett's elemental burst to heal characters on the team. This way you can both keep all the characters on the team above 50% HP pretty consistently and build a lot of stacks from Fiorina's burst before Deya actually starts dealing damage. While Deya isn't exactly moving mountains here, the team does feel pretty good because the damage is not bad and it's all in AoE. She feels much better if you actually have constellations on her, especially her constellation one which is an enormous damage increase for her. But you might be asking, isn't this literally the same as putting any other pyro unit on this team replacing Deya, and you're exactly right. But listen, just let her have her moment here, she deserves it. My point is that there is a team that actually makes Deya carry feel good, so there is value in potentially using it. In terms of builds when it comes to artifacts specifically, Deya has a lot of options because you have her signature set, the Borukasha's Glow, the Emblem set, the Marashose set, she has a lot of options that are all similar in terms of damage output for her. Anything works really, but the Emblem set is the safest one in terms of uh, building because it gives her extra energy recharge which she needs on this team. In terms of weapons, the Beacon of the Red Sea, her signature, is still very expectedly the best in slot, but since her release she has gained more playable options. It's probably not fair to say new options because uh, it was already out when Deya came out, but Mailed Flower uh, gained a new value now that she's actually usable on Vaporate's teams because it gives you a lot of elemental mastery and that's useless if you don't proc reactions, which was the case when Deya was played on Monopyro teams for example. Overall, let's be honest, Deya is not great, she's not a very good character, but it's pretty nice that she got a lot of possible new uses now with Fontaine. While those options might not be that optimal, if you really want to use Deya, they're quite viable. Having said this, I'm done for today. See you next time. Peace.